Hey, and welcome everybody. Come on in. Uh, there are a couple seats to here, down here, down front. I'm glad you're all here. And we still have a few people coming in. So uh, yes, there's a. you can sit right down here, right down front. Great, great. Um, everybody, just uh, come on in. I, uh, before we get started, there are three things I, I want to ask you to do. And that first thing is to go ahead and get yourself something to drink. Um, uh, my, joy, my drink of choice is water. You might like tea or soda. Uh, we've got coffee over there as well. So go ahead and grab yourself something to drink. Second thing I want to ask you to do is get something to take notes on. It might be pen and paper, might be your iPad, might be your cell phone. Personally, I like taking notes on my cell phone because I always have it with me, so I always have my notes with me. Uh, so that's the second thing. And then the third thing I want to ask you to do is just prepare to have a good time. Just, we're going to have some fun. I've got some great information to share with you. And again, I'm, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad we have this, these minutes together here. So um, let's get started. Hi, and welcome again. I'm Kim Warren Martin, the Belief Catalyst, and I am excited that you're here tonight. I wanna get started by um, asking a couple of questions. How many of you out there, by show of hands, have experienced some disappointment? Okay, great, I can see disappointment is in the house. I, thank you, I appreciate your honesty. And by show of hands, how many of you out there have experienced some failure, uh, perceived failure? How many of you have experienced failure? Exactly. Thank you for, again, for being honest and raising your hands. Now, you know, I know for a fact that failure or perceived failure and disappointment is in the house. And the reason I know that is because the number one cause of disappointment is unmet expectations. So by that, I mean you expected one thing, you got something else. Or uh, when it comes to a perceived failure, you thought the outcome would be this and it was that. Or even if it was the outcome you expected, what happened on the other side of the outcome did not align with your expectations. Maybe it was reward or recognition or something like that. So I know it's there. And what I want to talk to you about this evening is you didn't fail. You just forgot who you are. You are a person who is on a journey. And while there are things that may have disappointed you or things that are perceived failures, know this, you didn't fail, you just forgot who you are. So we're gonna talk about that and finding your success in a sea of failures. So who is this for this evening? Well, this is for you if you are that person who puts everybody else first, your family, your friends, the community, uh, volunteering, your, your work, everything. You put everything before you, then comes your own self-care when there's very little time left. So if you know what that feels like, this is for you. This is also for you if you are that person, you have a dream in your heart and you're constantly wondering, is now the time to go for it? Uh, so for you, your dream feels like a moving target. Uh, for various reasons, you may have started to start, but you never really got started. And you know, there is a scripture that says, hope deferred makes the heart sad. So you are so excited and you know this dream is alive in you, but you're not sure you can get it done. So it's a moving target. You start, you stop, you start, you stop. If that's you, this, this time is for you. This information I'm gonna share is also for you. If you are a person who is totally stressed out, um, you give all you can to work. Um, you're very successful, but it takes all you've got. You've made sacrifices. Perhaps you delayed marriage or having children or uh, moving or taking a promotion because of other family things, but you're totally stressed out, constantly worried. Um, this is for you. I want you to know again, you have not failed. You just forgot who you are. So literally what happens is when we're getting those place in these places we also our relationships start to suffer so if your relationships are unfulfilled right now whether it is with a spouse um, a significant other whether it's between you and a parent you and a sibling you and a child if your relationships are unfulfilled you're doing everything for everyone including the job you're you're very successful but you you still have a hole somewhere this is for you. So I'm glad you're here tonight and I have some great information to share. 
Now, one of the things is we can be successful and still be unfulfilled. Failure, we often see ourselves as a failure if we're successful in one area, um, but not in others. So if you did delay uh, the getting married, like I did, or having children like I did, but you're successful in your career and now you want a lifestyle equal to that and you don't have it, you don't know how to get it, um, you may see yourself as a failure. But like I said, you are not a failure, you just forgot who you are. You know, as I, I started to think about this, there is something called, um, which I believe I discovered, but <laughs> anyway, I call it affirmational memory. So what is affirmational memory? It is literally the space in your brain that holds the belief system for who you are. So when we start to encounter these disappointments and these perceived failures, if we have not been practicing our affirmational memory, it's easy to get down on ourselves. And I completely understand um, not being fulfilled, having all the things uh, that you acquire externally, but not having those things that bring joy and, and contentment and fulfillment on the inside. So people strive for happiness. A lot of times we do. I did myself. Um, but happiness isn't quite fulfillment. Happiness is an emotional state. It literally is, you can be up one minute, down the next, happy about a situation, um, disappointed about it the next time. So happiness really is an emotional state and we cannot live our lives on emotions. Now where we want to be is in a space of fulfillment and fulfillment is a soulful state. It doesn't really matter what's going on around you. You are confident in who you are, where you're going, uh, what you're striving for, what you're looking to achieve, whether you hit the goal this time or not. Uh, you, you take on the attitude that John Maxwell said, sometimes you uh, win, sometimes you learn. When you are in a state of fulfillment, you may not hit the target, you may not have the expected outcome, but you learn from that. And what I believe is when you learn, you're always winning. So technically, you're always a winner. So you can start to take on that attitude and put that in your affirmational memory. So you are always a winner. Now, um, I understand what it, it feels like to have success without fulfillment. And having all the external things, um, the career, the car, the home, all of those sorts of things, but still having a hole in your soul and not having fulfillment often leaves us empty. Um, because when we're so successful in one area, we feel like something must be wrong with us if we can't transfer that into other areas. So say from career to personal life, if you've climbed that corporate ladder and gone up, 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 but you're constantly in and out of relationships in your personal life, that can leave you feeling empty and feeling sometimes like a failure and wondering what is wrong with you. But again, I say to you, you are not a failure. You just forgot who you are. So I'm Kim Warren Martin. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me and why I'm talking about this. Uh, I'm Kim Warren Martin, I'm a wife, and I just wanna pause because I really love my husband. He's an amazing guy. He's my rock, <laughs> he's my babe, he's my booger bear, I call him sometimes, <laughs> and uh, I just wanna give him a, a kiss. Um, he may be out there, may not be out there uh, watching us, but really, and he's not present in the room here, but really, I just wanted to let you know that I am so excited and and just wonderfully blissful um, to be a wife. I'm also an investor. Um, we invest in currencies, options, stocks, uh, real estate. We do those things because it makes us feel fulfilled. Uh, we had a goal of having, uh, creating income to support the causes that we care about. So we found some ways to do that. And for us, those things are helping us to continue to grow in our fulfillment stage. Uh, I am also an avid traveler. I love traveling. I've been to almost every continent in the world. So whether it was for vacation or work, it truly was a blessing to learn about different cultures, meet different people, eat different foods, just have all these amazing experiences, see all these historical things. Um, so I love traveling. I also love, love theater and the arts. In fact, I got to tell you, my uh, career, I had a long-term career uh, in the technology industry. But when I was growing up, I just knew I was gonna be singing and dancing on Broadway. 
curtain calls, you know, um, encores, the whole nine yards, uh, acting in Hollywood. And then I was sent a different direction uh, to become an engineer, had a great career. Um, like I said, worked with some brilliant people, did some marvelous things in that career. But for me, for the longest, that was a source of a void and unfulfillment because as well as I was doing in my career, I still had a hole in my soul. So while, where I am today, um, it wasn't always that way. So one of the reasons why I do what I do is because I want to help other women not just be successful and great achievers, but move beyond that to a state of fulfillment, to that soulful state. Um, there were a, a number of things that happened in my life uh, as I was going throughout that career, like I said, that literally what happened for me is, I'll, I'll just be honest and I'll just tell you. <laughs> One day I was in the shower, and it's really not a laughing matter, because I was sleep deprived, uh, my health was suffering, I was completing projects at work, um, I was getting raises, I was getting all the accolades and awards and those sorts of things, but deep inside I was empty, I was suffering, my health was starting to be impacted, and I was in the shower this morning. I had very little sleep and I was in the shower and I was talking to God. And I said, as I let the hot water run over my face. And what I said was, God, you have blessed me so tremendously. I literally don't even know if I have the right to ask you this, but there just has to be more. There has to be. And the reason I know there has to be more is because I feel it on the inside and I feel that there's something more significant, there's a greater mark for me to make out on the world. And so that is what I want to set out to do. And so then I began on the journey of fulfillment. Now in life there are three journeys. The first one is the journey when we're growing up and you're being taught various things. Uh, you're going to school, your parents are teaching you how to walk, talk, eat, dress, how to have proper manners and behave in public, all those sorts of things. And you get through high school and then uh, you, you head off to college. And that's journey number one. Journey number two is where you're now in a career and you are working to be successful, to, um, to grow and to learn and to prove who you are and to establish yourself. And for a lot of us, we've done that. For me, I did that for 27 years. And that morning in the shower, I was at, at right at the start of journey number three because I was looking for fulfillment. Journey number three is about filling that soul in your, that hole in your soul and looking for fulfillment. And Ladies, I'm excited to say I found that place. And my big why is helping others to do that. Um, I read a statistic that said, the number one regret people have on their deathbed is the fact that they lived the life they were expected to live, not the one they wanted to live. And if that's you out there, uh, raise your hand just a show of hands because I know exactly how you feel. And I want you to know that you are not alone. And that is why we're here today because my big why, my reason for being my uh, source of fulfillment is for helping other people to find fulfillment in their lives. And as you get started on that journey, there are a number of things that you have to do. Uh, one of those things is first, you know, clearing out. You really have to clear out. When you wanna move forward, you can't take baggage from the past with you. It's gonna slow you down hold you back. And so one of the ways of doing that is what I call mastering the disappointment within. It is mastering your relationship with disappointment. Now, I have a four-step methodology for doing that, and I want you to know that that methodology was created out of my own journey. So it was what I did to get myself in a place where I could move forward and I could be able to uh, get on the path to a fulfillment. And what I want to do is I'm going to spend just a few minutes walking you through it. You can see here, like I said, it's a four quadrant system. So if we could just hold on this slide for a moment, um, everyone uh, have pen and paper, or if you are um, just taking notes on your cell phone, uh, you know, take it the best way that works for you. But if you've got pen and paper, I want you to draw a horizontal line down the middle of the page and then a I'm sorry, a vertical line down the middle of the page and then a horizontal line across the middle of the page. Basically what we're doing is creating 
four quadrants. And we're going to walk through uh, this, this mastering the disappointment within uh, formula here, these four steps to move from regret to rebirth. So in that first quadrant, which is the top left corner of your paper, um, that one you can label it regrets. Um, regrets, disappointments, failures, any of those sorts of words that um, when you look back, you don't get a real good feeling in your gut about what happened, label that column that. And then what we're going to do is just take a few minutes to list those regrets, list some of those disappointments, everything that you had to go through. It can be anyone, anything, or any situation that you feel like has held you back. Even though you are already successful, perhaps something occurred that didn't have you go to the next level or to go for that VP promotion or to take a CEO position at a different company. So write those things down. Anything that has caused you disappointments and regrets. And you know, a lot of times when people do this, they go all the way back to childhood because it could be something that an aunt said to them or an uncle or a cousin or a third grade teacher, or even a parent in a moment of um, irritation or um, just frustration um, that really changed the person's life. One of the things I know about disappointment, it is an invisible force that literally can control you. It can control how you make decisions, uh, whether you move forward, uh, it just controls you. It's like gravity, you can't see it, and you feel like, you swept it under the rug, I've gotten over it, um, I've moved on. But when we get in spaces like this and we have an opportunity to look back and to think, so many different things come up, so many emotions come up. So I want you to take just a few minutes to write those down. And even as I'm talking, uh, go ahead and write them down. And um, we're gonna, in just a second here, we're gonna move to quadrant number two. But make sure you get those things down. Again, it's anyone, anything, or any situation that caused disappointment, that caused regrets, that literally caused you to feel like a failure. Even though you're not, it might have caused you to feel that way. So go ahead and get those down. Now we're gonna move to quadrant number two. And here, we're gonna talk about realizations. And this is where you take a look at that list of regrets. Um, I know we had to bring some Kleenex out in the room here um, because some hard things come up. But even in the midst of, you know, drying the tears, okay, just take a look back and look at them from a very healthy place, not an angry place or bitter place, but really look at them and see what lessons you can, you can extract from that. What things did you learn? Everything you had to go through um, in that regret column, what did you learn? Did you learn anything from those lessons? Were you able to grow through those things? And were you able to take something that you can put into practice to help prevent those sorts of things from coming up again? Perhaps it was something as simple as you didn't speak up for yourself. And now you have learned if you speak up for yourself and voice your opinion and your desires, you can find yourself in a different place and be more content and comfortable in life. So that's quadrant number two. We're taking a look for realizations, for lessons um, that we can learn and glean from and put into practice to stay in a different state. Now we're gonna take a look at quadrant number three. <coughs> and quadrant three, literally is learnings that you have put into practice, you are starting to see some success from them, um, but you, you know, you put them into practice in your own life first, and so you know they work. So now what you wanna do is teach others. And what's really great about that is, um, I heard uh, a teacher say that, we are often, what we're sent here to learn is often what we're sent here to teach. So those things that you learned in quadrant number th two, you now have put into practice, had some success, you can begin to teach others. And you can look at some of those things and see how you can start to craft your own personal success formula from those learnings and those things you put into practice. And the beautiful thing about this uh, quadrant number three, the reinforcement is that you are able to help others um, who are going through 
go through with someone who has gone through. So how amazing is that? If you can envision having had someone who had already walked the road that you're walking uh, when you were walking it, it might have made it um, a bit easier on you and you might have passed through some things sooner. So that's quadrant number three. You're reinforcing by putting those lessons into practice, getting some success, as well as going outside of yourself and teaching and helping others the same. And you now have your own personal success formula. What's going to work for you to help you not be in a place where you're constantly getting misaligned expectations? Um, I'll give you an example for uh, something for me. Um, one of the things I did when I walked away from my corporate career was worked with a lot of different coaches. Um, I really, really had a heart's desire to do the work I'm doing now, and I wanted to get to this place so that I could help others. And um, I spent a lot of money on people, products, and programs and didn't get the results I was expecting. So there are lessons I learned from that. Make sure that there is alignment. I even learned um, different sort of pay structures and things so I paid as things were delivered and that really worked well for me rather than you know dropping 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars at a time and a year later still not having had delivered what I was expecting. Can you imagine uh, spending that type of money and not getting the outcome you're looking for? That could truly, truly, in fact and did in my case, lead to disappointment and it is what led me to walking through this process and realizing that it was a process that could be repeated over and over again and could help others. So that's just an example. So for me and my own personal success formula, one of the things I have to have is an agreement where I pay on delivery for things when I'm working with coaches. And it works well and it makes sure that I get delivered what I'm expecting and the relationships thrive as well. So uh, in quadrant, so that's quadrant number three, the reinforcing. And all of that is helping you to move toward quadrant number four, which is rebirth. This is where you are renewed. Um, you look at the things that you can carry forward. Um, you, you rise up, you've been rejuvenated, you've been revived, you're excited uh, where your dream might have been on life support. Now it's revived, it's out of intensive care, it's thriving, and you are committed to accomplishing it and bring it to pass. So this is that first phase, the rebirth. Uh, if you can imagine a phoenix rising from the ashes, from the ashes of regrets and failures and disappointments and learning lessons and reinforcing those and getting to this space of rebirth, that is phenomenal. And I love to see that happen um, in the people that I work with. So it's amazing. And here's what happens. When you get to this rebirth phase, then you can get started on the road to fulfillment. And that is our ultimate goal. So I just wanted to walk you through that. And um, we're going to move on. So hopefully on your paper, you've got some phenomenal things uh, written down and you're realizing uh, some things that were holding you back and you're feeling some breakthroughs while we're in here even now. Now I have a resource that's going to be very helpful for you um, as we just walk through that process. So text the word FULFILL to 408-913-6963. Again, the, the word FULFILL, you want to text that to 408-913-6963. And you're going to get that resource. Don't worry about anything. Um, you know, you'll, you'll get instructions and all of that when you text the number. So go ahead and text the number FULFILL to 408, I'll say it a little slower. <laughs> I know I talk fast sometimes. 408-913-6963. I'm excited for you to have it. So, you know, one of the things that holds us back, and this is interesting, um, I talked a little earlier about having heard a qu quote that said, um, you know, the number one regret people have on their deathbed is the fact that they lived the life they were expected to live, not the one they wanted to live. Now, Les Brown said, too many of us are not living our dreams because we're living our fears. And what does he mean by that? Literally, there is fear um, that can overtake you and 
at least you know come upon you when you think about moving from a space where you're living what's expected of you, whether it's your parents, whether it's your group of friends or the people that you work around, they have these expectations, and yet you really wanna be in another place. So moving from the expected life to the fulfilled life, the life that you wanna live, um, it, it brings on some fears. But the reality of it is, fear is in our lives anyway. And there's lots of fear, because we've experienced a lot of different things as we were on this path. So. You know, one of the things that happens to us is there's a lot of traumatic things that have occurred. I could, I mean, there are things in my own career um, that happened that just really brought me to tears. Now, one of those things you do as a woman, uh, particularly a, a minority woman, you're not gonna sit in your office and cry, <laughs> right? But there was one day I absolutely could not avoid it. Like I couldn't have hold the tears back if you paid me a million dollars per teardrop. But really what happened was, you know, I, w I was having a, I had a cold and various things like that. So I, I played it off like it was a part of the cold. Um, but there are things that happen in our lives that, you know, lead to more regrets and more disappointments. And they're traumatic. You know, literally some of us are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder from some of the disappointments that have occurred in our lives. And yet we still stay over in the life we're expected to live instead of moving over into that space of fulfillment and the life we want to live. Now, some things have been so traumatic and that, that can happen on a lot of different levels, whether it's in a relationship or in your career. For me, um, it was on several different levels or um, you know, it can be from an authority figure or just general you know, PTSD. Maybe you had a bad car accident and you know you don't want to drive for a while when we think of ptsd a lot of times we think of you know the military we think of soldiers who have been on the battlefield um, suffering from ptsd and that is absolutely true but a lot of us most of us experience trauma in our lives and we sweep it under the rug or we're told to get over it we're told to just move on and we sometimes pretend to have done that um, but the truth is, we still have those things, the impact and the, the hurt from it, the shock, the, the disappointment still plays a role in our lives. So even after you, you know, move past that rebirth, then we have to really start digging into those things that are holding you back even further so we can really get on your journey to fulfillment, on your journey to true north. Every last one of us, I'll, I'll share an example um, for myself. Uh, a, a traumatic experience. I d I've never uh, been on a battlefield or anything like that. But one night when I came home from working very late, um, around 1, 1 30 in the morning, I was greeted by a male voice. And mind you, I was single. <laughs> no one had a key to my condo. Um, but I was greeted by a male voice that said, boo, from behind my door. Literally, someone had broken into my condo, into my apartment, and was waiting for me to arrive. Um, this person, according to police, much later, had been watching me, studying my habits. Um, I, I went through a phase in my life where I called it my stalker, and then I realized, don't own that. He was not your stalker, he was a person that was stalking you. But the reality of it is, the trauma from that night, we fought, we scuffled, he literally even shot at me. And I have to tell you, I thought that I was shot um, because I couldn't hear out of this ear. Uh, yeah, I couldn't hear out of this ear for the better part of like 15 minutes or so. And um, thank God that neighbors heard it, heard me screaming because I screamed and screamed and screamed. They said there were about 14 911 calls that night just from my screaming. And my neighbors heard me screaming and one came over. And around this time, the gentleman left because the alarm on my door started going off. Um, I will say to you, I'm not gonna go any deeper into it, but you can, ideally you can see how traumatic of an experience that is, or was, and um, how it would take a long time to recover. Um, I did go to counseling, um, but literally I had friends to say, or perceived friends <laughs> to say, when are you gonna get over that? Um, and I just remember saying to one of them, it was a, a guy friend, and I said, literally, I don't have to get over anything except 
I think I might just have to get over you and us. Maybe our friendship isn't what I thought it was going to be because it was so traumatic. And and my expectation was that people were going to be there um, to support me and really try to understand what it was and what it was like to do that. So it was a 10 year journey back for me. The fact that I'm even standing in front of this room and I'm talking to people online who knows where they are in the world um, is evidence of the fact that I have gotten over that trauma, I have moved past that disappointment. And so that was just an example of some of the things that can occur in our lives that cause that stress. And the fear from it just caused even more stress as I tried to move throughout my life and regain some sense of normalcy. But again, for me that took 10 years and you know, honestly my prayer is that nothing like that has ever occurred to you, for you, um, but if so, uh, we can certainly help to work to get you into a space where you can uh, come back to some level of normalcy and get ready to move, experience a rebirth, and get ready to move into fulfillment. So I have a special invitation to you, and I'm really excited. Uh, I think it's just life-changing, and it is what I consider to be my life's work, and I'm super excited to be here in this place and be able to invite you into my successful and fulfilled academy. Um, can you be successful and unfulfilled? Absolutely. Can you be successful and fulfilled? Absolutely. Now you might be sitting out there wondering, does it work? Um, will it work for me? You don't understand what I've gone through. And I've been transparent and vulnerable and shared a few things that I've gone through with you. And um, you may still be wondering, well, she doesn't know what it's like to be the first in my family to be at this level and everybody's depending on me and yet I wanna move and do something different. Yes, I do, I do understand that. Um, you, you're really probably wondering, will it work? Will it work for me? And is she the person that can help me get to where I wanna be? Well, absolutely. Um, been there, done that, uh, wrote the book about it. In fact, developed the program and the academy. And I'm excited to invite you into uh, my successful and fulfilled academy. So let me tell you just some next steps. How do you, how do you get started? Uh, we'll go on over to www.successfulandfulfilledacademy.com. There you'll have an opportunity um, to join our winning team and get started on your journey to fulfillment. Not just success, not just achievement, but fulfillment. Is there an investment involved? Of course there is. But let me tell you literally what you're going to get. Um, you're going to get access to some bi-weekly trainings, uh, intensive workshops, and something, there will be um, expert guest trainings, um, recordings, uh, so everything we do is going to be recorded so that if, if, for example, you can't make it live, it'll be available to you to listen to at a time that's most convenient for you. And I'm really excited about the Undeniably You conference. Now, why is it Undeniably You? Why is my brand Undeniably You? Literally, because I believe we all have a calling and a purpose and there is there's something on the inside of us that we want to get to and we need to bring out. Um, I believe in living life with a legacy mindset. Now the reason I say it that way is because the only legacy you can leave is the one you live. It's important to make your mark uh, so that when you, uh, another stat I heard was um, when people, no, we talked about it, the number one regret people have on their deathbed. So I don't want you to be in that place when you get to that transition point because honestly there's nothing you can do about it. Now we have time. It doesn't matter um, you know, where you are, what point you are in your life, in your career, you can have fulfillment. And if you're asking yourself, is this all there is? Is there more? You know that there has to be more. And I will say to you, the answer is yes. So I wanna offer something special um, for those of you who know that this is something that you're looking for, you've been waiting for it, uh, we have a fast action bonus. And I'm not a person that just likes to say we have a fast action bonus uh, and we don't. I literally mean this, we do. We have a fast action bonus. Um, actually, I, I went past the slide too quickly, let me go back. <laughs> so you're gonna get the one day undeniably you experience and I'm gonna be there, and I'm gonna be the one to help you walk through all of this. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about the opportunity to help you become you know, successful and fulfilled, to, for you to wake up every morning excited. We're gonna go through um, five steps to identify your gifts and talents, and what I want you to know is this isn't your normal 
personality assessment or, um, I don't know, test or some of those things that you've very likely been through, um, whether it's at work or in a volunteer organization or a church, those sorts of leadership style things, it's something completely different because it's focused on fulfillment and it's focused on you living the legacy um, that you want to leave and being fulfilled. So very different. I'm excited about that. And this is just for the first 10 people. Um, the other thing we're going to have for you as one of the first 10 people is a private one on one. Now, why are we doing that? Because we want to get to know more about you. Um, this is a crucial, criti critical time. It is about helping you to get to fulfillment. And so we have to know um, who you are, where you are, where you want to be, and literally look at crossing that, you know, building the bridge to get there and, and closing that gap. So very excited about this private one-on-one. -on -one. Now, here's everything that you get, um, literally. Um, the Undeniable Masterclass, the Undeniable Mindset Mastery Class, um, amazing value. Um, the Successful and Afield, uh, Fulfilled Academy, as well as the uh, Private One-on-One, -on -one, the Undeniably You Experience, and all the other things we talked about, um, the workshops and trainings and recordings for, for $69.97, literally for $69.97. Um, well, let me show you what we're going to do. <coughs> We have a special offer, and right now, you can join the Successful and Afield, Fulfilled Academy for $97 a month for the first 10 people. So go to www.successfulandfulfilledacademy.com, fill out the information, you're gonna get some instructions, and you can take a look at all the things that you're gonna be able to get. Uh, again, www.successfulandfulfilledacademy.com and uh, $97 a month, everything that you see here, and we're, I'm blessed to be able to bring it. So, um, now, ladies, I know we all crave and thrive and want fulfillment, and you can do it the hard way and try to do it alone, or you can do it the easy way. And I believe that the Successful and, Afil and Fulfilled Academy is the easy way. So go on over to www.successfulandfulfilledacademy.com Give us your information. You're going to get a call from myself or one of our um, coaches, and we're going to help you get started on your journey to fulfillment, on that third journey that I'm so excited about and so um, just amazed to be living in right now. So just a, a few final thoughts. Um, life is absolutely amazing, and a lot of people say, Life is too long to be, or too short to be unhappy, or too short to be this, or too short to be that. So fill in the blank with whatever it is. You might have found yourself saying uh, some things like that as well. Um, but from my perspective, life is too long to live it unfulfilled, to live it in a place where um, you're doing what's expected of you, but not what you wanted to do. Um, I, I, I know that there is a place for all of us to wake up happy, excited, successful, and fulfilled. You can be successful. Can you have fulfillment? Yes, you can have them all together. Can you have it all? Yes. But my firm belief, as long as you're the one that defines what all, it all is, you absolutely can. You truly can be successful and fulfilled. So I want to thank you uh, for your time and for uh, listening to this uh, information. I'm, I'm excited to bring it to life, to birth it. And uh, I really, again, go over to SuccessfulAndFulfilledAcademy.com. We look forward to hearing from you and look forward to working with you. Thank you.